Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about the odds. Now, odds uh, are a subset of probabilities. Basically, the odds are the probability that an event will occur compared with the probability of it not occurring. So this comparison is usually expressed as a ratio in terms of in favor or against. So you might think of odds as very black and white thinking of either we get what we want or we don't and there's no kind of in between. Right. So odds is another way of expressing the probability, but generally when we have it for or against. So we don't have kind of any in between areas or other third outcomes. Uh, for example, we might talk about odds in terms of winning our poker hand. Either we win our hand and we get, you know, a three of a kind or whatever it is we're trying to get. What are the odds that we'll get that last out or we don't? Although perhaps I shouldn't encourage gambling here. I'm still young. But anyway, uh, you know, that may have been a great example of where you've heard of odds. Or if we flip a coin, what are the odds that it'll be heads, which is what I called. You know, it's either it's, it's heads or it isn't and I've lost, right? So that kind of thing. We talk about the odds as kind of an all or nothing form of probability where we only really care about did we get what we wanted or, or did we not? Yes or no, right? Black and white. Okay, so let's talk about uh, formulas. So let's talk about the odds in favor of the event occurring. Well, the odds in favor would be the probability of the event occurring, right? And then the odds of against A occurring would be probability of A not occurring over the probability of A, right? or the number of times A doesn't occur over the times it does, right? That kinds of thing. So odds is a little bit different, right? It occurs as a ratio of yes versus no. So it's slightly different from probability in the sense that it's more expressed in terms of a ratio as opposed to a fraction with the overall number on the bottom. Here, the overall number, you know, is not, it's not that. Right. So it's slightly different. So do keep in mind that slight difference there. And, you know, so as to not get too tripped up on on what's what here. OK, so let's do uh, some examples here for this one. The first example says if two coins are tossed, the possible outcomes. Are heads, 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 tails, tails, heads and tails, tails. What, what are the odds of flipping two heads? Well, let's think about it. Well, the odds of heads, heads are equal to one, right? There's one way we could get two heads over three because there's three ways where we don't get two heads or we either get just one head or we get two tails. Or we could say this is a one to three ratio, right? That one time in this one to three ratio, we'll get it. The other three times we will not get it. Now, what about the odds of not flipping two heads? Well, in this case, it's the opposite. In this case, we're going to have three over one or a three to one ratio because there's three outcomes, which are heads, tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails, where we do not flip two heads. There's only one chance out of those full four that we do flip those two heads. Very good. Good. All right, let's do example two. Example two says, from a standard deck of cards, what are the odds of drawing a spade? So before we actually answer this, I just wanna quickly review what is in a deck of cards. So a deck of cards has four suits and four face, and uh, you know, 12 is it? No, 13 face values, sorry. 13 face values is, is the answer. Uh, so the four different suits are spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. and each, each of these has 13 cards in it, right? One of each, um, one of each like face basically, um, or one of each value, I should say, because not all cards are face cards. Uh, and so the odds of a spade would be 13 over 39, right? Because there's 13 spades in the deck and then the other 39 cards are not spades. They're either hearts, diamonds, or clubs, so non-spades. So this is going to be 13 to 39, which actually does reduce to a one to three ratio. 
Now, what are the odds of drawing a king? Well, let's think. Well, king is one of the like the values of the cards. So there's four different kings. There's the king of clubs, king of hearts, king of spades, and king of diamonds, right? So that's four different kings. And how many non-kings are there? Well, there's 52 cards total in a standard deck. So the non-kings are the other 48 cards that are not kings. So therefore we have four to 48, which does reduce to one to 12. Like that, good. All right, let's move on to the next one which is probability versus odds. So it says probability and odds are both used to express probability of an event occurring, but are often confused to be the same thing, right? Which they are not, right? For example, if we were looking up here at the odds, you know, the probability of drawing a spade, it would be 13 over the 52, which is the total. Or, you know, for B, it would be 4 over 52, which is the total. However, in this case, we only did, uh, you know, the um the number of things that did fit the facts that did fit our event over what didn't right rather than the total so that's that's the key difference there and here's another example that's going to illustrate that difference as well here we want to know the probability of selecting a white ball and the odds of selecting a white ball if there are four white balls and six red balls in a dark bag and one ball is selected presumably randomly selected uh, what is the probability of selecting a white ball? Well, let's see. Probability of a white ball is going to be the number of white balls, which is 4, over the total number of balls, which is 10, right? So 4 over 10, which is the same as 2 over 5. Now, what about the odds of selecting a white ball? Well, the odds of a white ball would be equal to four, right? There's four white balls over six because there are six non-white balls, right? There's six red balls. So that's going to be four to six or two thirds, or, you know, two to three, sorry, not two thirds, two to three as well, right? And so that's the slight difference. It's kind of like how in general, sometimes people confuse ratios and fractions as the same thing, which they're not exactly the same thing, but they're very similar. They're just kind of different ways of expressing something. So think about that. Think of probability as fractions, whereas odds are ratios. However, they are used to express the same thing. And it's not necessarily harder to find the odds than it is to find the probability or vice versa. Generally, we'll be talking about the probability, but uh, you know, do make sure you look for the word odds sometimes as well so that you don't get confused and accidentally solve for the probability when you're being asked for the odds or vice versa. Good. Very good. All right. So next there is a formula that says if the odds in favor of event A occurring are H over K, then a probability of A would be H over H plus K. Now, why is that? Well, because we must add H to the bottom as well, right? If we're doing probability, because we need to make sure that it, the, you know, the denominator and probability is the total as opposed to just the converse uh, of events occurring, right? The opposite events occurring. Okay, so let's uh, use that to figure out these next couple questions. Example four says, before a horse race, a horse named Monty Mule is determined to have a seven to one chance of winning. Determine the probability of Monty Mule winning. Okay, so we have H over K, which is 7 over 1 as our odds. So that means our probability, probability of Monty Mule win, probability of a Monty Mule win would be equal to 7 over 7 plus 1, which is 7 over 8. So a pretty good chance, right? 7 times out of 8 he wins. Only one time does he not win. So it seems like Monty Mule is pretty likely to win, at least according to this question. Very good. All right, the next one says, if two dice are rolled, what are the odds against getting a sum of seven from the two dice? All right, so at long last there, there is my addition table. Basically, all I did is I said, well, die one is either one, two, three, four, five, or six, and die two is either one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then in the middle of this table, in this highlighted area, these are the sums, right, when we add the two numbers from across. 
right? So this is our full addition table, and this is going to help us solve this question. Okay, so here they ask, what are the odds against getting a 7, right? Well, the thing is, what are the total number of outcomes here? Well, there's 36 outcomes, right? 6 times 6. And what is the sum, you know, what is the number of things that would give us a sum of 7? Well, let's see. Let's highlight them in a different color, maybe in purple. Here I have 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. That's 6 7s. So there's 6 possibilities of a 7. So therefore, the number of things where we do not have a 7 no sum seven would be the other 30, right? If we have six things that are a sum of seven and 30 things total, then that means 30 would not have that sum, right? 30 have some other sum. So, so therefore the odds against a seven would be 30 over six or five over one, right? Or five to one would be another way of writing this. So those would be the odds that we do not get a seven. All right, well, that is it for the odds. Good work today, everyone. And I will see everybody next time to talk about probabilities and various techniques we can use in order to solve various probabilities. So I will see everybody then. Good work today and bye for now.